Well, Fermi was a remarkable man. He had a very penetrating insight. He was very soft-spoken. Uh, he, I remember very well, I knew him best in the years after the war. I, I must say, what I saw of him during the war was at first he visited Los Alamos only occasionally. Then, even when he was there uh, full time, he had this very Latin appearance of dark hair and a slightly dark complexion. Uh, uh, and uh, whiskers that, that were somehow dark in shade. He looked, Fermi, a great deal like the Spanish workers who were all over the place uh, doing menial jobs. And I would have to say I often was in the position of looking out the window at the man who was washing the windows and wondering, my God, that's Enrico Fermi. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, Fermi had uh, an extremely rational way of expressing himself. And I gather, though I, I didn't know this directly, that he used to get up much earlier in the morning than his family in order to have a couple of hours thinking. Uh, before he began the day and uh, realizing that he was never going to get anything more done <laughs> in, in, in that day. Fermi was in that way immensely creative and his insight was absolutely singular at every stage in the project. The bomb was at the top of a hundred foot tower. Uh, it would be exploded. It was supposed to be exploded at about one or two in the morning. Uh, nothing happened. I was watching from a mountaintop near Albuquerque, and that was a kind of breach of security, I'm afraid. Nobody was, who was not concerned with the test was supposed to be aware of it or, or watching for it. Uh, uh, Fermi was there, and uh, just before the test, he took a sheet of paper and tore it up into many small bits. And uh, stood there uh, facing away, one was supposed to face away from the explosion because the flash could otherwise be blinding. In any case, one was supposed to have dark glasses. Uh, and he was some 10 miles away, I think. Uh, he, the moment he saw the flash, uh, dropped these bits of paper. Uh, he began dropping them, I think, one by one, uh, in order to see what would happen with the blast that came by. How much displacement of these bits of paper in the course of dropping from, I don't know, a hip height, uh, dropping to the ground, how much displacement would take place among these bits of paper? That would give him some hint of the strength of the blast wave uh, emerging, not the radiation or anything else. Uh, and he indeed made an estimate which was in the right ballpark for the equivalent tonnage yield of the bomb. It was one of the better estimates. We didn't really have a good idea of its having produced whatever the figure finally was, something like the equivalent of 14,000 tons of TNT, uh, until uh, there were chemical analyses made of, of the uh, material remaining. Uh, <clears throat> those weren't available for a couple of weeks.